Anyway, I probably won't be here tomorrow. Okay, Riley, we're starting. Okay, okay so we're up to looking at the role of the media now as a avenue of redress to obtain a remedy. First, looking at TV. We have current affairs programs and they can draw attention to customer issues. Pro, they can include some information that happens to be true, but cons, one, they melt your brain and turn you into an angry bogan. Two, they mix journalism with their sponsors. For example, they have an important story on how to choose the right washing machine, then a helpful guy from one of their sponsors is their guide. So there was, oops, okay, back, okay. Um, essentially, you've watched The Current Affair and those type of shows? Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. Okay, normally they are going for the big splashy headline to make you turn the program on. They'll usually try to scare you into doing whatever it is they are trying to push you towards. And they will have... Let's say McDonald's was a sponsor, then they'd probably do a story on why KFC and Burger King are bad for you. Or they, um, let's say Woolworths is a sponsor, so they'll talk about um, eating fresh and healthy at home and they'll you know, take you into a Woolworths shop and show you how to pick nice fresh produce, like they pander to their advertisers. Okay. All right, um, this example, shopping at tomorrow's supermarket, a current affair. It was one of their sponsors. It was, if Coles was their sponsor, then they were showing how Coles was going to implement new things. Um, they also then unfairly use clips um, of a guy from Choice who was originally talking about how we pay more for foreign products in Australia to investigate Costco. But are their prices the lowest or are you better off looking for bargains at your local supermarkets, for example, going to Coles, who is their sponsor? You guys aware of Costco? Yep. No. Yeah. No? Yeah, both are. In are there something in America? Um, there's one on Parramatta Road in Sydney. There might even be an, what, another one in Sydney. There's one in Brisbane too. And there's talk of building one in Newcastle at the moment. I really hope so. So, yeah, you can buy, instead of buying um, a jar of peanut butter, like this size, they'll have giant jars of peanut butter. It's like bulk buying. It is. It's bulk buying. So you're getting a cheaper price per litre, yeah. per, kilo, per kilogram. Etc. Okay, also with TV, we have our favourite friends, The Checkout. The Checkout's a program where some of the chaser guys team up with organisations like Choice to present consumer information in a humorous way. It started in 2013 and is produced by the chaser team and shown on ABC One. Pros. It's funny. It also provides us with accurate information. It's looking out for our consumer rights and it's informing a lot of people about Australian consumer law, which the ordinary person doesn't really understand those laws. It's not something you, know, you read about in the magazines or on your social media very much kind of thing. So it, it's really good that it, it informs people in a well, what's the word? Not you know, it's kind of an informal way. So people watch the program, they enjoy it, and they're learning at the same time. Cons for the checkout is the fact that it's on ABC, and that's only because the ABC only has 800 to 1.2 million viewers per week, whereas a current affair, the one the show will melt your brains, they get approximately 1.4 million people watching that show five times a week, so five nights a week. So ABC just has less of an audience. So that's the only real con about the checkout. Okay, moving away from TV. Newspapers. Newspapers. 
<laughs> okay, we're getting braces. Newspapers are also able to report on consumer issues, but as always, you've got to consider the possibility of bias in any publication. So, articles from News Limited are likely to frown upon regulation and the regulators, preferring to let the market work things out, or bizarrely, they do call the regulators toothless tigers, saying that they're not tough enough. ACCC still crying over Murray Goldburn's spilt milk, The Australian, 2017. Okay, so this is opposed to Fairfax papers, for example, the Sydney Morning Herald. They're a little bit more likely to have articles that are somewhere in the middle. So ACCC unconsci targets unconscionable Murray Goldburn, Murray, Murray, Murray Goldburn. So let's assume you read a Murdoch paper. You read The Australian because the Daily Telegraph is for people who are just learning to read or need something with short words and paragraphs or who need something to tell them the footy scores. Uh, Essentially, Daily Telegraph is not the most reliable source of news. It's, um, pardon me, a bit of a dumbed down version of the news. So that's that for the role of media as an avenue of readers.